this is wonderful news, isn't it, Humphrey? Yes, Minister. Overnight, we turn a run-down chemical plant from a loss maker into one of the most profitable units in the PCC. The point is that this factory is in my constituency. But it'll be good for the constituency. More jobs, more money. The only people we can possibly offend would be a few cranky environmentalists. At most, I should say, it couldn't cost us more than about 100 votes. My majority is 91. Moreover, if it proves not to be safe, I shall not allow it to be manufactured here. Suppose he produces one of those cautious, wait-and-see reports. Well, in that case, we don't publish it. You mean we suppress it? Certainly not. We just don't publish it. <laughs> What's the difference? Oh, just <laughs> all the difference in the world. Suppression is the instrument of totalitarian dictatorships. We don't do that sort of thing in a free country. <laughs> we simply take a democratic decision not to publish it. <laughs> Fine. And what am I supposed to say to the press and Parliament? We were hoping the Henderson report would say we'd made a wise decision. Instead, they say we've cocked it up. Oh, very droll, Minister. Well, what would I say? Well, there is a well-established government procedure for suppressing, for deciding not to publish reports. Is there? Really? Of course. You simply discredit them. Good heaven. How? <laughs> well, stage one, you give your reasons in terms of the public interest. Uh, we should do what we reasonably can to limit emissions and avoid climate change, man-made climate change, but we shouldn't clobber the economy. You hint at security considerations. Uh, they are a, an extremist splinter group from the most extremist terrorist group uh, the world has seen. Well, you point out that the report could be used to put unwelcome pressure on government because it might be misinterpreted. Well, I'm not sure that's exactly what he's suggesting. Well, anything could be misinterpreted. The Sermon on the Mount could be misinterpreted. Indeed, it could well be argued that the Sermon on the Mount, had it been a government report, should certainly not have been published. <laughs> a most irresponsible document. All that stuff about the meek inheriting the earth could do irreparable damage to the defence budget. <laughs> You're right. What else? Well, you say it'd be better to wait for a wider and more detailed study over a longer time scale. Well, suppose there isn't one. Better still, you commission one. Gives you even more time to play with. <laughs> a final report with recommendations will occur later in the year. <laughs> and all this is what you call stage one? Yes. Now, in stage two, you go on to discredit the evidence that you're not publishing. Well, how, if you're not publishing it? Oh, really, Minister, it's much easier if it's not published, obviously. You do it by press leaks, of course, not directly. You say it leaves some important questions unanswered, that much of the evidence is inconclusive. Now, uh... You know, I, I think that uh, the climate change science uh, is far from settled. That the figures are open to other interpretations. That um, certain findings are contradictory. The fact that we've had, uh, if anything, cooling global temperatures over the last decade, notwithstanding continued dramatic increases in carbon dioxide emissions, uh, suggests that uh, the role of CO2 is not nearly as clear as the climate catastrophists would suggest. But to make accusations of this sort, I mean, you'd have to go through it with a fine tooth code. No, 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 you, you say all these things without reading it. There's always some questions unanswered. Such as? Well, the ones that weren't asked. <laughs> <laughs> and that's stage two? Yes. Now, in stage three, you undermine recommendations. Not really a basis for long-term decisions. Not sufficient information on which to base a valid assessment. We see a bigger, better, brighter future for them, which is being gainfully employed. Are you aware of the study by Melbourne University Professor Jeff Borland that found work for the doll caused participants to spend longer amounts of time on benefits than unemployed people who weren't working for the doll? I have seen all sorts of studies uh, in relation to work for the doll. What I would say simply say is that the evidence that I have seen, the anecdotal evidence... Not really any need for a fundamental rethink of existing policies, broadly speaking, endorses current practice, all that sort of thing is easy. The Australian people voted to repeal the carbon tax and they voted to repeal it for two primary reasons. It doesn't work, it's not achieving its goals, but it comes at an immense cost. More than that, of course, it came without an election mandate. And that always does the trick? Nearly always. Suppose it doesn't. Then you move on to stage four. Oh, stage four. Now, <laughs> in stage four, you discredit the man who produced the report. Off the record, of course. And I want to assure Andrew 
and everyone who has contributed to this report that we will meet these challenges. Uh, yes, uh, at times Andrew's recommendations run ahead of today's public opinion. You say that he's harbouring a grudge against the government, or that he's a publicity seeker, or better still, that he used to be a consultant to a multinational company. Supposing he wasn't. Then he's hoping to be. <laughs> Everybody's hoping to be a consultant to a multinational. <laughs> or oh, he's trying for a knighthood or a chair or a vice chancellorship. Really, Minister, there are endless possibilities. You campaigned against the legislative prohibition against giving offence. And I'm pleased to say that the author of those draft laws is now leaving the parliament. Well done, IPA. The Minister for Administrative Affairs, James Hacker, has announced that he'll not be giving his approval for the British Chemical Corporation to manufacture propanol. The report of the Henderson Committee, while generally approving the drug, said it would be irresponsible to deny that future research might disclose health risks. Well, Minister? Well, Andrew? Do you feel like a hero? Indeed I do. And number 10 will be delighted. One of the worst governmental decisions I've ever witnessed. And one of the best political decisions I've ever made. Oh, oh yes, Minister. Yes. 